Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And uh, yeah, well, thank you if you joined us for our streaming last night. Um, we we showed that not only were we two uh, middle-aged white men plundering Egyptian antiquities as a nod to history, but we were also two completely hopeless, hapless and incompetent escape room and game players. Um, there were quite a few comments about how we missed the obvious through looking for things too hard. I guess things are only obvious when you see them, as we daily learn on this channel. But thank you if you watched it. The video, the the VOD, the uh, recording of that streaming session is available on the channel. Um, and that delayed my finding out that there'd been a YouTube problem with my video yesterday, which didn't go up, therefore, at the time expected. So sorry if you were looking forward to that gas episode um, or... You wouldn't have been aware it was a gas episode, but it, it did come out. Once we finished streaming, I had to re-upload it and uh, YouTube then accepted it instantly rather than the six or seven hour delay it had put the other one on, which was very annoying. Uh, so apologies for that. But that was all yesterday. Now, coming up in a couple of days, we have February the 1st and our quite approachable Sudoku hunt, which is, we think, going to really appeal to people who maybe have found some of the last hunts a little difficult, unsurprisingly, frankly. This one should be really manageable. It's themed on the puzzles from our apps, and you can use the links under the video to find all of our apps, to find Sven Sudoku Pad, to find Discord, the Discord channel associated with CTC and also to find your way to Patreon. We do encourage it because there's a lot of content there. Something that is already up is my solve of Fist and Mafel's puzzle from a couple of days ago, a six by six. And I think Simon is planning to post a reply on Patreon as well soon, quite a short reply. So I don't know what that consists of, but we will find out in due course. Um, Anybody on Patreon will find out in due course. So the first link under this video is to this puzzle called Flightning Lamp by Olimar, who's often sent us puzzles on particular days in the past, but this doesn't have that cachet, so it's clearly something he's proud of for other reasons, and uh, I guess we'll find out as we go. What are the rules? Well, we've got normal Sudoku rules. We've got digits not repeating along the marked diagonals. Ooh, so that's a set of the digits from one to nine. This is also a marked diagonal, although a few of the cells markings are a bit obscured by the green lines. Actually, when you, oh, maybe they're not obscured. No, you can see that. Um, digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb, but there's only one two cell thermometer. So that cell is smaller than that one. Neighboring digits along a green line have a difference of at least five. So. These two cells must have a difference of at least five. These are German whisper lines, the green ones. Um, digits along a purple line form a sequence, not necessarily in order. So this could be a set of four, five, six, or seven, eight, nine, but they could be in any order. These two are very short sequences. That's not so much a handicap. I mean, with a German whisper line, a short line is less helpful, but with a with a Renban line, a short line can be quite helpful once you know anything about one of the digits. So those are, oh, there's also a black dot, digits joined by the black dot. So these, in these two cells, have a ratio of one to two. Not all dots are given. So lots of rules, but only very few types of each rule um, operating. Don't know how hard this is. Uh, do give it a, tr I mean, I, I worry that so little of the grid is filled with so few clues that this might be very difficult, but I don't know. Do give it a try on the first link under the video. Maybe you can judge from the video length how hard it is. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. And let's look at this middle box because it's got a lot of stuff. Ah, it's got a, it's got a lot of green tinged cells in it. Yes, here is a knowledge bomb about German whisper lines. They can never contain a five. And that is because the digits that are um, at least five different from five are not Sudoku digits. They are the minus numbers, zero, and 
the two and more digit numbers. So they can't go in Sudokus. So these eight cells, which all contain a green line, cannot have a five, and the five in the middle box has to be there. Right, so we know that this cell, which is bigger than five, let's color the bigger ones than five orange, is on the German whisper line, and that's next to these two cells on a German whisper line, which therefore must be smaller than five, because if you have a digit over five with a difference of five to another digit, that must be smaller. So those ones are small. And that, yes, these seven digits are all on the same line. So, first of all, let, let's color them alternately. Now let's not color them high and low, but I'll explain in a moment how we can easily do that. Actually, this works very nicely. So they alternate between whichever of purple is is whichever of purple and green is high and whichever one is low. But we've already got an orange here, and we can only have four highs and four lows in each box. So the purples must be orange, the greens must be blue, and low. And we can finish off the colouring along this German whisper line, and we've got quite a lot of the grid coloured now. So, yes, this is another very useful thing about... Right, after five, the next most restricted digit on a German whisper line is six and four. Now you can see in this box, six and four are going to have to be on a green line. What's interesting about six and four? Well, this cell cannot be a four or a six. Imagine it was a four. Then both of these cells would have to be five or more different. They'd both have to be nines. And you can see how that breaks the rules of Sudoku. So we will just leave it at not being a four or six here. The same is true of this cell, which sees two others. And therefore... If they can't be four or six, the same is true of this one, actually. That sees two blues, um, and therefore that can't be four or six. And we know that orange is high, so the only place for six is here. And that is going to be next to ones, as we've said it must be. So, yeah, I think that that is right. I'm just going to recheck that. This can't be six, because they'd both be ones. This can't be six because they'd both be ones. This can't be six because they'd both be ones. That's right. So these are from seven, eight, and nine. These are from one, two, three, and four. But some of them can't be four for the same reason. That can't be four because those two cells see each other. So they can't both be nine. Same's true there. So one of these is a four and is flanked by nines. Either there's a four there and two nines there. Or well, there's a four there and two nines there. Oh, and we've got four blues on this diagonal. Oh, well, that's interesting. And four is definitely in one of these two in the box. So these, these are from one, two, and three, but neither of them can be a one. So that's a two, three pair. This is now a one, four pair. This is a two, three pair. And that means this can't be a seven because one of those is a three. How about that? That is an eight or a nine. Here, so one of these two is a seven, and whichever one it is has a one and a two next to it on the line. So there's a one, two pair and a three, four pair in here. Oh, and look at this diagonal next. This is lovely. That's so clever. Look, two oranges have been used on this diagonal. Every other cell on the diagonal, apart from in the middle box, is on a German whisper line. And each of these whisper lines alternates high and low. So both of these two German whisper lines that I've just highlighted needs at least one orange digit to exist. But they can't have more than one each because that would take us to more than four orange digits on the line. And we know that the diagonal line is a set of the digits from one to nine. So those are from seven, eight, and nine, and definitely include a seven in one of them, which might be interesting. These are all blue. And one of them is a four. Yes, one of them is a four. 
and that four must have a nine next to it. So one of these, as well as one of them being a seven, one of them is a nine. That's brilliant. So that's a seven nine pair on the line, and this must be an eight now. So that's a seven nine pair. That's so interesting. Um, this doesn't connect with the eight, but it does connect with a seven or nine. Ah, right. Here's another absolute knowledge bomb about diagonal puzzles this time. Yes, as you come out from the middle of a diagonal puzzle, so you radiate along the web, sort of, these four digits must be different. Well, that's fatuously obvious because they're in the same box. But I'm now going to tell you that these four digits must be different, and that's incredibly helpful here. Incredibly helpful. Right, it really is. Why must those be different? Well, look at this one. It can see those cells by normal Sudoku rules, and it can see that one by the diagonal. And that's obviously the same for each corner here. It sees all the other four. They all must be different. And that's great, because this is therefore, they're all blue in this diagram. So that must be a set of the digits one, two, three, four. We know where two and three are, not individually, but as a pair. So this has to be the four, and that's the one. That makes this next to a four on a German whisper line a nine. That makes this a seven. Um, and on the line, we've just got two and three to go. Oh, and three can't be next to seven. So that whole diagonal is done. Apart from those two ones, that's all the digits we've got in and the diagonal's done. Now on this one, we've got the four blues. We can color these orange. I should have done that earlier. And the same deal is going to apply here on the web, as it were. As you go out along the web, these four all see each other, so they and they're the same color. It's not so good on the corner cells because they're not, but these ones are, and we've got the nine and seven placed. So these two are a six eight pair. And that means along the line, the corners are a seven nine pair, which is fascinating. Okay, so what next? This, one of these is a four, so one of these is a nine. Oh, we've got a one on a, a Renban line. So these others are a two and a three. Oh, I didn't see that. That's good. So that's giving us all kinds of two, three pairs. I'm ten. Oh, two and three on a black dot. This can't be a one, so it's a four or a six. This must be odd, therefore. It's in a consecutive relationship with the four, six, so it's a five or a seven. Can't be a three, because there must be a three in one of those cells. Then these two don't include one, two, and three. Um, but they're anything higher than that, so I can't color them or anything. Can't actually color either of these yet. I'm, I'm very tempted. I'm so tempted I am going to color these two, three pairs. So let's call that one yellow. That makes this one the opposite. Let's call that red. This one is yellow. That one is red. This one is yellow. That one is red. Now, does that tell us anything? If we can find cells in the grid that surprisingly see both yellow and red, then they're not two or three. But I can't. Bother. OK. Um, what next? Yellow, yellow, there must be a yellow there. Don't know what that does. Ah, oh, there's got to be a seven in one corner. Right, so if there's a seven there, the seven there means there's a seven right there, which would fix this whole thing. But there might not be a seven there. There might be a seven there. And that, given that one again, is going to put a seven on this Renban line. Let's 
So one of these two, and maybe both of them, have a 7 on. That's not thrilling, is it? These ones can't contain a 4 or a 1, but they must have a low digit in one of them, which is going to complete the 2, 3 pair in its row or column. What about these two? They can't be 8. But they can't be 6 because they're both next to a 2 or a 3. So they're 7 or 9. Do they have to be a pair? One of each? Whichever one of these is a 4 is flanked by two 9s. Then the other one becomes a 1. Whichever one is a 4 has the two 9s here. Then that becomes a 7. Ah. Oh. Oh, well, that's very interesting, actually. Right. These are a pair of nines, not one of each. And I'll show you why. Let me show you why by giving the example. If that was a four, these would both be nines. Now, that would make this a seven, and that's fine. But the seven has to be next to one and two. But if yellow... 2, 3 is a 2, then red 2, 3 is a 3, and that makes this a 9 as well. And that would work the other way around if you chose this as the 9 and that as the 7. So although I don't know which is which, I do know that these two are both 9s now. And it's fine for 9 to be next to a 2 or a 3. It's just not fine for 7 to be next to a 4. So, oh, that 4, sorry, that was part of the... Um, explanation. So I don't know what that is. Let's get that right. Okay, that's better. So, we get nines. Now there has to be a nine there and a nine there. Uh, I'll pencil mark that. Um, now these can't be nines and they can't be ones and fours and they can't be sixes. So they're from Two, three, seven, and eight. Are they though? One of these is a seven, and that's going to affect either of these being a seven, isn't it? If that was a seven, let's try this again. If that was a seven, the Let's assume there is a 7 on here, but that, that, this is a 7. Then that has to be where the 7 is on the little 2-cell line. Then we get our 1, 2 here. This becomes a yellow 2, 3. Yes, this doesn't work. That's brilliant. That's absolutely magnificent. Right. If this was a 7, we get a 1, 2 here. So red 2, 3 is a 2. And that means that because that's the 7, that can't be 7, this would be the 7 if there's a 7 on the line. You'd have 7s here and here. But red is 2. That is red and is 2. So this could now not exist. It, it can't be 3 because that's not far enough away from the 7 we've putatively put here. And it can't be 2 because red is 2. And it can't be 7 or 8 because they're too high. It has to be a low number. So that works again this way around. If that's 7, then yellow is 2. This is 7 and that's impossible. So there is no 7 on this line. That is beautiful. That's weird. I'm not sure if that's in the in the predicted solve path because that's difficult actually. One of these is an eight now. Tempted to corner mark that, but I won't. Oh no, this is important though. This is important because we've got seven out of these runs of cells. And one of these has to be a seven, remember. So if that's a seven, then we get a seven on this Renban in column seven. We also get a 7 in one of those cells. We get a 7 in one of these two. The 7 on the Renban means the 7 in box, 
in row six is there, and this becomes a seven, and this becomes a seven. Yes. So if there's a seven here, we end up with a seven here by default. Now, I mean, I'm using a sort of an imaginary X-wing here. So let me let me just explain with with numbers, because this is very interesting. If you get a seven here, the seven in this box must now be in those cells. No, let's let's make it simpler. The seven in this row, if there's a seven here, the seven in this row is in one of those two. Now, also, we get a seven in one of those two, because that's where the seven in this column would have to go. And then, because there's a seven there, these can't be a seven. The seven in this row has to be in one of those two. That pair of sevens means that the seven in column... I suppose I didn't need to show that. The seven in column three has to be here. And then that's going to put a seven here. And this is an important cell for this. So that's what happens if you have a seven here. Now, the alternative to having a seven there is that there's a seven here on the diagonal. And that immediately puts a seven here. So this must be a seven either way around. That makes a six. And now we know that yellow is three because of the black dot. We know that red is two. This is so clever. That's not a three and that's not a two, but we don't know which they are. Now we can't necessarily put a seven here. Maybe the logic will work the other way around as well. I think it might. So if there's a seven there and a seven here, the seven in row three is there. Yes. And there must be a seven here. And more simply, the alternative to a seven being there is a seven here, which necessarily puts a seven here. So there's a seven on this Renban with a six or an eight. That one can't be a six. There is a seven there and there is a seven there. That uses up the sevens for rows four and five. The seven in row six has to be in this box. I think we also discovered while doing this that if there's a seven there, there's a seven here. And maybe, yes, if there's a seven here, then the seven in row three is there. So in box three, there's a seven in one of those two cells. It's either there or the seven there forces it to be there. And in box nine, there's either a seven there or a seven there forces it to be here. So we've got seven limited to a couple of cells. Maybe that doesn't help, but... It's interesting. Now, two is in one of those two. What else has happened now? Something's probably happened and I haven't noticed why. Uh, three. Three. Three is placed in box two. That's the sort of thing I was talking about. Let's make it blue. Let's actually get rid of the yellow and red flashes. Now we've identified the numbers. We don't need the colouring on those. Um... Three is in one of those two cells in box nine. No, don't say that's all. One. One is confined up there. And over here to the same pair. Uh, not in that box. Yes, in this box as well. Sort of these odd little corner shuffle pairs. Um... Oh, that doesn't go any further, as far as I can see. Bother. Oh, I can colour those. No, oh, they're orange. So are both of those. Does that get anything done? Um, no. I can't see any new sets of four or anything. I can tell there is only one five in this central five by five area. I don't think that's that interesting. Seven, two, two. Yes, there's a two in one of those two. OK, 
Come on. Come on, puzzle. I've done a lot of work here. Give me a break. What on earth is next? Two is in one of those. Three, one. Oh, do we... these haven't been resolved at all. I don't. Oh, yes, they have. That three, yes. That stops this being a seven. So we've got a nine here. Nine goes with, well, that makes, let, let's do it in order. That makes that a seven, which stops this being a four. That's a one. Box five is finished. There we go. Sorry. This has become an eight. So that's a seven. That ren band's done. All the ren bands are done. Thermo's done. Almost all the German whispers. Just one left. And then some of that diagonal. Right. Uh, what did we get there? We got ones, twos, and threes. So there's a one somewhere down here. There's, oh, we've done the threes. There's a one somewhere over here. There's a two there, three and four, seven. Uh, oh, look, that's a seven, six pair in this column. That's good. Didn't expect that to come out. This is a four, five pair. Can't color those. Nine is in one of these two. Six, seven, nine, one, three. Five is there. Ooh, five could be helpful because it's the non-coloured cell. Um, but I don't know why. Right. These are from... That's one or eight. This is one, two or eight. Don't know where eight is in that little two by two. All that's giving me. Six, seven. These are from two, four and eight. One of them is definitely a... Four, yeah, that figures with that four five pair. Oh, come on, think, think, think. Nine must be up here somewhere. Eight must be in one of those. Seven, yeah, we've got that. Seven. Oh, eight in this. Oh, look, that eight is now looking at that cell. Right, three and eight. That's the last whisper. It's done. Um, eight is large. Three is small. Right, in this column, I've got all four large and the five. These two are low. Yes, they don't include the eight. That's one and two. I'm just using the colors as a crutch now to find things that should be perfectly obvious. That's a nine, eight pair. Gonna color them. That's a two, four pair. Gonna color them. Uh, let's take the corner mark out. Right. Weird puzzle. Weird, weird, weird. Right, let's keep going. Somehow. One. Yeah, that's fixing all the corner ones. There's a one. There's a one. There's a one. Lovely. And let's take out one as a marking from the others. Um, th three. Three. The rivals. Three, three. That can't be a three, so this is a three. That's a three. Same again, good old corner markings. Right, that might be the last three in the puzzle done. So let's colour them as well. They can all be blue. That Those ones I found are blue as well. Because um, the colouring is helping a bit. Two and three. This is a one. That is the last one in the puzzle as well. Should have spotted it before. Never mind. Uh, so in this row, I can't colour because we've still got a five to place. What next? I suppose if we, so we've still got to use these six, eight things. Um, right. And, ah, no, here's something perfect yes which looking at that six eight possibility has made me notice where does eight go in this column it does not go there because of that eight and it doesn't go there because of that one so it must go here where it belongs um what does that do for us it puts an eight in one of those two cells at all Okay, what if that 
is a six, then that's a six, six here. Six here, that becomes eight. That's fine. What if that's an eight? Ah, lovely. Yes, if this is an eight up here, we've got a problem. And that is because the eight in box one has to go here. And now, where can you put an eight in box seven? You can't put it here because of this eight. You can't put it down here because of this one. And you can't put it on the diagonal because of this postulated eight. So that's a six. This is eight. That is helpful. That's so neat again. I mean, it's mind blowing, isn't it? We get a six in one of those two cells, six in one of these two. Seven and six are fixed here. Six again in one of these two. Uh, yes, so six in this column is now in one of these two. Oh, and I don't know which one. Bother. This can't be six, seven or nine now, though. So it is four or five. Okay, can I pull the same trick with seven and nine somehow? Don't think so. If that's a seven, well, it puts a seven there and doesn't really tell us anything else. If it's a nine, I don't know. I don't think the other way around, well, I don't think the corners are really being as helpful as those inside cells. Okay, come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. Seven, well, that can't be a four. So four in the final column is in one of those two. Doesn't really do anything else. Eight is now definitely up here in column three. Oh, and that can't be an eight. So eight in this box is fixed. Um, Oh, yes, yeah, of course, in this col in column eight, we can place eight. It can't be in any of those cells, is the simple way to look at it, because of the various eights there. So that is an eight, and that does fix the last eight. So we can color them. I think that's all the eights. That's what I'm saying there, I allege. Uh, this is a naked single seven. I like suddenly finding a naked single, even this late in a puzzle. This is a five, six pair. That's fixing this as a four. Not a green, but a regular four. There we go. Um, this must be a nine, because it can't be seven anymore. Yes, that's finished the diagonal. Hurrah. Uh, this is a five. I think we're going to finish now. This looks, given that we know four in the final column is in one of those two cells, this is effectively naked in the box. It's got to be a nine. Yeah, I'm just checking there. Two, four and two can be placed. Four and nine, seven. Four and five. That's going to fix four and two. We can finish row two with a two. We get five and six here. This is a four, five, six, triple. I can't deal with them. This is a six, nine pair, which are resolved, just as the five, four pair next to them. And that does the five, six pair. I will finish off the coloring for you in a moment. Um, why is this not obvious now? Probably is to you. Yes, four goes there, so two is fixed. Then we can put in five, four, six from the middling numbers, five and seven there. This is a six, five, and let me do the coloring before I uh, before I finish off, reds go blue, sorry, fours go blue. <laughs> what am I talking about? The mind is gone. Um, sixes go orange, nines go orange, sevens go orange. We did the eights before and this must be orange and be a six. Bingo. What a clever puzzle. 
Lightning Lamp by Oli Mar. Hope, well, I hope you found the same way through it I did, because that was very pretty indeed. I'm fascinated, you know, I'm glad Oli Mar told us this thermometer, because I can imagine that not knowing whether this was a six or a one would have led to a, a very late disambiguation, probably via this dot of highs and lows. But uh, I haven't tried it that way, thank goodness. Hope you had a go. That was really interesting. Um, and yeah, hope to see you on the channel again tomorrow. Hope this video uploads properly today. And oh, what was I? I was, there's something else I thought of in the middle about. No, I don't know. Anyway, there we go. Shut up waffling. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you.